What's up, everybody? It is Kevin Kellum. This is, more importantly, WrestleZone's post-show for Monday Night Raw on the 11th of May. Joining you on the podcast feed on WrestleZone Radio, on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever it may be. We're covering everything going on on the Raw after Money in the Bank, and quite the episode it was. Truly, this is like the kickoff of a whole bunch of new storylines. Across the board on WWE, we have superstars from SmackDown coming over to Raw. We have a main event angle with Randy Orton and Edge. And Becky Lynch is out of the picture for the foreseeable future as she is no longer the Raw Women's Champion. We'll get into all of it. If you're watching or streaming live, don't forget to share the link and get your comments on screen. Tell us where you're watching from, especially if you're with us for the first time. Uh, now, I'm not alone. He is the enemy of fun. He is in the town where WrestleMania was supposed to be, and he's still mad about it. I'm, ca- I'm talking to Robert DeFelis. Robert, your favorite wrestler was in the final segment of Monday at Raw tonight, Edge. He was, and after a moment, after a show that took us through many emotions, I felt like the closing segment took me back in time. Because apparently we're getting Edge versus Randy Orton at Backlash in a wrestling match. And something Charlie Caruso seemed to call the greatest, what may be the greatest wrestling match ever. That is a stretch, even for a diehard Randy Orton and Edge fan. But you know what? I am down for it. Edge has to have a straight up match at some point anyway. So. Let's do it. Let's do Edge and Randy Orton we'll, backlash. We'll touch on that, but the big story coming out of Raw is how the show started off. Uh, we knew there was uh, some rumblings, and we reported on it this morning at WrestleZone.com, and the media started to pick up on it, and then WWE certainly acknowledged it, that Becky Lynch would have some big announcement, not si- specifically what was billed as her simply uh, going toe-to-toe with the winner of the Women's Money in the Bank match, which they've been promoting for a while, but the tone changed coming out of the weekend that there would be some big announcement. She comes out. She's very emotional. We heard shortly before they went on air that it may have been a pregnancy, and she kind of confirmed that in the segment. This was gracefully done. I thought this was um, the highlight of the show. I thought it was the best part of the show. I thought it was very interesting. When Asuka came out, I was like, why aren't they just letting her finish? But it really set up that line for... Uh, you go be a warrior. I'm going to go be a mother. And the opening of the briefcase revealing that when you won the money, the break money, in the bank briefcase, you didn't just win it. You won the title too. Uh, I thought it was graceful. It was well done. It was good writing. I thought Becky Lynch delivered her points. I thought Oscar just being Oscar and manically frantically it, it just through a mixture of Japanese and English is spouting her joy. And she kind of tonally changed right away. I like this is the best part of the show. I think that, in an era without the cuts and time breaks for crowds to chant, mm-hmm. thank you, Becky, you deserve it. Kevin is currently not on screen. I don't know if that's just for me or for you guys as well. But keep rolling here. Uh, Becky Lynch hands the Raw Women's Championship to Asuka after cutting what was a very emotional promo, saying you know, she came here in 2013 with n- knowing nobody in the country. Mm-hmm. And... Then she hits Asuka with the, I'm very happy for you. You go be a warrior. I'm going to go be a mother. And more than that, it was Asuka's whispered mother. And like the complete joy shown by Asuka, which for me led to what I I think is just, it's the best uh, real segment on Raw that I've ever seen. I hope you guys can see me again here. I do re- No, re- no, I, I don't. You Maybe. don't? All right. Well, keep going. I'm going to be right back, okay? Okay. Right. And um, I thought it was great. I thought it was a f- fantastic segment. Uh, let's see what you guys are saying in the comment. Benjamin A. Jones. I have a feeling Greg, you was pregnant before. No, I'm not going to touch on that. William T. Wade just says he cried. You know, it was emotional. It was a, a really strong moment. Uh, Scott George says, great segment. Going to miss Becky wrestling. Yes, I think we all will miss Becky wrestling. Uh, Stephen Chambers says, we won't see Rey Mysterio for a while. We'll get into that. That's because of Becky Lynch's fiance and uh, presumed baby daddy, Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. Uh, More into Seth Rollins in the, in, the, in the night here as well. 
Uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can see me now. I hope nope, that, that, that I keep going. All right. This is so, oh, this is so frustrating. Uh, keep going here, buddy. I'm going to try and figure this out. Got to love this program. I'll All be right. right, right here. So, um, following that, we get, um, you know, the opening of the show, more wrestlers congratulating Becky. And then we see Bobby Lashley, who kind of runs through Umberto Carrillo and is greeted later in the night by MVP, who is just saying, when are you going to get out of your own way? When are you going to get out of your own head? I like the idea of MVP with Lashley. They have a brief history of uh, tagging together in TNA. They're part of the beatdown clan. I enjoy it. I enjoy the fact that MVP is trying to drive a wedge between Lana and Lashley. And I'm overall excited for where that is going. Let's see what you guys are saying in the comments. Seth Rollins ended the longest reign. Yes, he did. Seth Rollins did, in fact, end the longest reigning women's championship reign in Raw history. Um, let's see what else you guys are saying. Did Ray fail another drug test? No, that hasn't been confirmed. Uh, keep Becky away from Snitsky. Yeah, I saw a couple of those tonight. I would definitely keep Becky Lynch away from Snitsky. Um, Man. The, how much? How many bad jokes did you see on Twitter tonight? How many bad Becky Lynch, Seth Rollins related humor did you? Did I you, made a few you... of them that I won't repeat <laughs> on this uh, show. I bring up how many bad jokes there are, and then you immediately go, "Well, I was also a participant in those bad jokes." Well, you know, <laughs> it's just like they write themselves in a way. Like uh, I saw one from Jordan Devlin that says, "You know, not everybody can say that their ma is the man," and it's just like. It's, it's good stuff, and I'm excited for Becky. She did an interview with People.com that we have up at WrestleZone that says how she's always wanted kids, and she knew early on in their relationship that she would be having kids with Seth Rollins because they're that close. And I, yeah, I'm very happy for them overall. Uh, yeah, and let, let's talk about how the Becky Lynch thing. Obviously, she's out of the picture. That's a huge star for them. That isn't just like any star leaving yeah. the company. This is a uh, you know I would I would say you have one of the top five um, stars in the company out of the picture now. Uh, you have I would say two of the top five because you've got Roman on the shelf, mm -hmm. you got Lynch on the shelf. You know we don't have John Cena anymore. It's uh they they're hurting I would say. I think they're hurting they for certain and maybe just maybe. This had something to do with them deciding, hey, uh, Edge, Orton, you want to wrestle? Uh, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out the tech issue with why you guys can't see me. I have no idea why. Well, we our... can't see you because your time is now, Kevin. I'm um, what? You, the, your time is now, Kevin. <laughs> Because I'm John Cena. Uh, yeah, just stay on with your voice. It's all good. That's what people are saying. I'll, I'll go with that. It's just very weird to have you be blank with a half the screen not present by someone. Um, you can file your complaints with BeLive, our uh, our service provider, which is not providing their service that they, they claim to provide. Um, I, I'll say this. I thought it was a pretty interesting show overall. A lot of new stories were launched on this episode. Uh, a lot of different things here of the new stories you saw kind of start because there was a lot of fresh takes here on different directions with with a lot of different talent. Which one uh, is the most appealing to you? Which one do you want to jump into first? Because we have more than a few to talk about. Um, it's not appealing to me in a positive way, but I guess I'm doing the enemy of fun gimmick. But the brand to brand invitation folks so we've reignited the wild card rule but we're, we're now calling it a brand to brand invitation mm -hmm. this is dumb they should just stop the brand split altogether and please end the madness i i didn't take that i i took it as more as let's try and get a fresh match up on the show either way but i didn't forgot, hate it there, there's full rosters kevin mm -hmm. there are full rosters why do we need to intersplice the brands Fresh matchups. There are full rosters. I say again, mm -hmm. there are many people that Drew McIntyre hasn't faced on Raw. He hasn't faced Lashley. But do he you want? No, 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 Robert. Do you want to see him face everyone on Raw? Yes, he's the Raw. Honestly, champion. no, no, no. Honestly, you really want to see him face everyone on Raw. Everyone. 
Yes, because he is the Raw champion. Okay, all right. Yeah, th- that that makes sense. Paper that doesn't make sense when you actually have a match, Robert. N- let me let me be frank. You could get a Drew McIntyre Cedric Alexander match, and it could be exciting. But you know, it isn't going to be a match with any decisive doubt in it. And you're not going to be nearly. Again, are you going to be more invested in seeing Drew McIntyre beat King Corbin or Cedric Alexander? Neither at this point. You just made it sound like Cedric Alexander isn't worth a damn. And I think uh, I didn't say he's not worth a damn. I'm saying he's not worth as much as King Corbin is right now. Well, more people not- hate him, and you want no Robert. More people hate King Corbin and want to see bigger matchups. I get the reasoning in this. I'm you looking the- at the re- no. I'm looking at logic and reason. You're looking for a reason to doubt. You're no, looking for I'm... a reason to poke a hole in it. No, they're they're on separate shows, Kevin. This isn't like this isn't. I'm not being funny here. This isn't like rocket science. They're on separate shows. What do you need to merge the brands for when you spend so much time on a brand split? You're mm. admitting that you failed. I didn't. I, when did they admit that they failed? If they if they admitted they failed, they say this failed and we're doing something else. They haven't said they failed. They have. When did they say they I... failed? When they admitted that they need to start intersplicing the brands by having King Corbin on Raw. That's admitting failure? That is admitting failure. No, no, that's you subplanning what you think on top of something. You don't know that. They didn't say that. When did they say that? Why else would they... Why else would they do that? You don't because they need fresh matchups. All right. He's gone through a lot of the people on the show already in a short amount of time. And they need to hold some things off. They can't just have them drill through everyone. You need more space between things. You, you li- How are you defending this? You literally have separate brands. I understand they have separate brands, but just because they're trying something doesn't mean I should hate it right away. I haven't seen them do it just yet. I, I, I think rushing to the conclusion that it's a, they're admitting failure. No, they're not. That's silly. That's not. I don't think that's admitting failure. It hasn't failed yet. You're saying something failed before they even did it. That's the. I'm saying the brand split failed, Kevin. What? I'm saying the brand split that they started in October failed because they're already reverting back to inner spicy. They were doing that on pay per views. They were doing it on different shows before. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a concrete brand split. I didn't. I didn't think it in October, and I don't think it now. Okay, Kevin. In October, we literally had a draft Mm -hmm. on SmackDown to separate the brands to say that these people will not touch. How are you saying? That they're not going back on that. Uh, my my pro, I'm, I, I'm not saying it's failed. I'm saying I don't think they ever committed completely to the idea. I don't think they ever said, this is it. You aren't going to see these people on shows with each other anymore. You have the women's tag team champions. They can bounce around. All right. You have Charlotte bouncing around. They've had many people bounce around. It's not something they do every week. So when they do it, maybe they're going to promote it to try and make it feel like something fresher than what maybe you saw the last week. Is there a problem with that? Is there a problem to do yes. something fresh? No, you fans want something fresh, or they're trying to give them something fresh. What's the problem in that? Tell me the problem in trying to do something newer. You literally have because you literally have brands. I, I can't figure out. So, oh, oh, this yeah, to you. I get it. Limitations to you are more important. Let me try and box you in and say work with less, but when they you want to work with more, they literally provided those parameters for themselves. Why do they have to be parameters? I don't think it's something you're locked into. What do you mean? They set the parameters. No, Robert, Robert, what you're what you're saying is no, this is it, and this is what they should have. And if they aren't good, it sucks. You're being what? openly negative. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You're being openly negative. People saying the virus killed the brand split. No, I'm not. I you're literally sitting here saying that, oh, this is great. This is fresh matches. You literally just started. Here, here we go. Here, here. I was expecting this. I was expecting this. Rich Murphy, Kevin will never have a bad word to say about WWE. Lol. I do have some bad words to say about WWE, and I will say them about it tonight. Uh, I th- this is a petty argument, by the way, Robert. We don't have to dig deeper into this. You and I go down this road quite a bit. If you side with Robert, go ahead, pile on me, because I had an opinion that deviated from from the internet wrestling community that feels they should. If if you're in a conference, you shouldn't be able to compete outside of the conference. They have a brand split, and they should regard. Come on, get What's over. What's the it. point of the World Series, Kevin? What? What's the point of the World Series? They have the two guys in the two different conferences fight each other. Robert, right? It, how do we get there? How do we get there? It doesn't matter that much. It doesn't. 
It's not that important. It's been proven not to be important. So why continue to limit yourself by this invisible line that you say doesn't mean anything? So end the brand split. Why do they have to end it? Because then you'd have less champions and you have less guys on TV. That would be fantastic if the title belts meant more. Because you have less champions, you have more challengers, you have more fresh matchups. Because then you'd have less TV. Then you have less superstars. Limited by the parameters, Robert. Then you'd have less superstars. How? How? Because you'd have one champion on each show, so you wouldn't have you. You would have one champion on each show. You have one tag team on each show. That means you'd have a lot less. You'd have a lot less meaningful matches on each show. You'd have a lot less prizes to chase after on each show. And superstars near the bottom would feel like the bottom. All right. If you want let if you want a real no brand split, expect a lot more guys to get dropped. Well, okay. That's what you want. That's you you uh, here it is. Robert wants people to get fired from their job. I didn't say that. I just said well, no, okay. you just admitted failure, Robert. You just admitted failure saying they need to they need to end the brand split and they need to fire people. They need to admit failure and people need to be let go from their jobs in this current climate, Robert. I, I did not I, say you did, that. You did I, you I said it not. with your actions, Robert. And I am left, I am left to get to that. I am left to reach that conclusion on my own with words you didn't say that I'm putting in your mouth that you put on a multi-billion dollar corporation that just gave you a TV show. We spent 10 minutes on this right now. And I I am, I am loving the streak we're on right now. We are in it. If you guys are enjoying me and Robert arguing with each other, um, uh, please give this video a thumbs up. Kevin, you lost your, uh, you lost your card to our club. Our club? I run the club! I run the club. Robert, did I lose my card to the club? I, I think they're trying to say the internet wrestling community oh, club. Oh, whatever. Well, whatever. Reach around and grab each other and, and rub each other nice. <laughs> oh, That's geez. what you're all doing. That's what you're all doing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, good okay. for you. Good for you. Yeah, complain about having a WWE Network subscription <laughs> then then watch something on it and be happy about it. I, I love you. Yeah, good, good for you. James Espanto, Fernando, you know the rest. He says, Big Kev, I'm going to side with Robert on this one. Fine, go ahead. Sorry, uh, for, uh, yes, argue. Uh, Robert, people say, Robert, just enjoy wrestling. I absolutely agree with him here. Uh, and then other people, happy for Becky Lynch. Hector texting here saying he's happy for Becky Lynch. If you're watching for the first time, this is WrestleZone Daily doing our post show of Monday at Raw. I'm arguing with my co host, Robert DeFelis, about logic and reason. And <laughs> it's not a usual thing, by the way. <laughs> it's not a usual thing. Uh, Becky Lynch is out of the picture. This, of course, was going to have some effect on Seth Rollins. Uh, we know legitimately they are a couple. Uh, they're having a child together. Legitimately, I'm happy for them. That that's a wonderful thing for any couple that's been together, and they are engaged. So that that is great. Uh, so they present the storyline ramifications of how this affects Seth Rollins, fresh off the loss to Drew McIntyre at Money in the Bank, which was a great match. I, I think that gets lost in that show from last night. That was a really really strong match. What do you think of it, Robert? I thought that the Drew McIntyre match with Seth Rollins was fantastic. Like, it was almost too good to be in front of nobody. Like, that match was yeah. a banger. That yeah, was it was good. a banger. It was absolutely a banger. I enjoyed it quite a bit here. Um, people says, oh, people got my back on this. Thank you so much. Continue to, if you're watching, continue to uh, join us here and, and enjoy me in this year. Scott George on this brand split issue. Brand split needs to happen with the pandemic going on and then go back to normal after the pandemic ends. Well, here's the thing. If they did that, then more people complain about it. Like there, there's no way to make you happy. All right. And that's the thing. And if you are happy, you're not going to admit you're happy. You're going to say that the superstars did it, not the people that wrote it or produced it or filmed it or turned the mic on or commentated on it or, mo or wrote graphics for it. The WB machine didn't make it work. Only the characters do. People are going to do that too. Whatever. All right, moving on, though. A lot of new storylines here on Raw. We mentioned Seth Rollins, where he's going. He gets into a tag match here with Rey Mysterio and Aleister Black, Buddy Murphy at his side. He's almost comatose at, at on the ring apron and then goes off on Rey Mysterio as the match ends and tries to edge out his eye with the corner of the ring steps. I thought this was pretty gnarly and brutal. Mm. And, and then immediately he kind of like comes out of it and says he's sorry as they're taking off Ray's mask uh, near the ring and then backstage. And then Alistair Black gets into it with Buddy Murphy. Uh, this I heard some people complain, why did Alistair get into a physical altercation with Buddy Murphy if really Rollins was the one who attacked? Because Murphy's 
defending Rollins. Remember yeah, he... yeah. So th- that that that's fine. We can deviate from that. But I like the idea of uh, Rollins saying, "I don't know what happened out there." I, I I like I like where this is going. I I don't know where it is, but there's a where there. There's a there there. What's going on with Seth Rollins? Is he lost his mind? Is the pregnancy drove him crazy? He can't win the championship. He's still trying to call himself a messiah. What's going on with Seth Rollins? You look like him. Tell me what's in his head. I have a theory. Uh, this is a strong reach. This one I'll admit is a reach. The first person to come up and hug Becky Lynch was Rey Mysterio. I think that maybe that just set something off in Rollins' brain. You know? Mm. Who knows? Mm. There has to be some type of a reason that Seth Rollins would just maniacally attack Rey Mysterio like this. I I think that doing this, I don't want to call it, split personality Seth Rollins kind of works for me. Where he wants to be a good guy legitimately, but he's got these sadistic tendencies. I like it mm-hmm. a lot. No man is ever truly good. No man is ever truly evil. Do you know whose theme song that comes from? Alistair Black. Let's put he's these two together. Face. Are you telling me like Seth Rollins is going to become like in DC Universe, like in Batman? He's going to be like Two Face? Seth Rollins is very much a bit of a Harvey Dent. I, I think there is something there. But Alistair Black, you know, he's like this very middle of the road. I, I see all things, good and bad. You know, he's. He's a good character to bring this out of Rollins. I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, Another uh, new element here on Monday Night Raw. We saw some development with this on the pay-per-view, and it definitely became fulfilled tonight. Umberto Carrillo and Bobby Lashley were in a no-DQ match, followed up from their gauntlet face-off last week. And Umberto laid chair shots into Bobby Lashley to to no... succinct ending drop kicking a chair into him hitting with the chair three times but no it didn't matter he got put in that big full nelson and bobby lashley tapped him out umberto carrillo poor guy he's always a faithful uh, strong hand for wwe on Monday at raw for the better part of a year now um but he got he got tapped out here and mvp presented himself possibly as bobby lashley's new manager we saw later on in the night that that would indeed be true mvp in action as well and a six-man tag match with his new tag team of fink and thorn against cedric alexander ricochet and pretty ricky our truth they presented this as a comedy gimmick where he puts in fake teeth i did not like this at all you don't remember this no i don't remember an angle from 10 years this, ago yeah this is a throwback to yeah throwback this is a throwback from 10 years ago uh, our truth is a funny guy. He has some funny things he's done with the twenty four seven championship and all that stuff. But I don't know where what, this came what made from. Them, what made them want to bring that back is a fantastic question that should be asked. I mean, if if our truth going to be your go to guy for comedy in the mid card, this is not his funniest bit. You know what I mean? When when I think of Will Ferrell, there's some movies I like from him more and some movies I like from him less. And if our truth is your comedy act for the mid card, this is not the funniest thing he has. It didn't add anything really to the match. They tried to do something funny where he threw the fake teeth to the ref. They tried with it. I'm not going to say that they tried with it, but more importantly, what came out of this was MVP seems to be the new manager for Bobby Lashley. What do you think of this? This is something that didn't impact wrestling. If MVP is going to take more of the mentor role who gets physical now and then, uh, this is something people wanted from him. This is what fans wanted from him when he kind of rejoined WWE back in January. I like the direction of this. Yeah, this is a pretty good can't miss. I, I think this is almost foolproof. I really don't think this can miss. MVP is great. Lashley is great. Lashley needs to be presented as great. Lashley is a tremendously gifted athlete. He needs to have that match with Brock Lesnar at some point. And hopefully with MVP across the mic from Heyman, you know, you can do something special there. I like uh, the Mighty Don't Kneel. I like uh, Brendan Vink and Shane Thorne. I'm a big fan of them. Pretty Ricky didn't work 10 years ago. Please don't bring it back. I'd rather R-Truth focus on slapping Tom Brady and getting back his 24-7 championship. 
Well, that wasn't a funny segment on Raw, but there was an attempt at comedy that I actually did not think was going to be entertaining when they pitched to it in the first hour and then gave it to us in the uh, first hour and then gave it to us in the third hour. And that was a basketball game between the two rival tag teams, the reigning Raw tag team champions, the Street Profits against the Viking Raiders on the premise of we can do anything you can do better. And of course, uh, the Profits want a ball and the Raiders don't know how the concept of basketball works whatsoever. That's what they're playing for. They show up in their Viking Raiders gear. They have their war paint on. They're at a gym. They have gym shorts on with their ring gear, which look funny. Uh, and they proceed to have a very comedic basketball game. This delivered. I thought it was funny. I like the idea of them rolling the ball to each other. That's how they thought you passed it. Uh, it was it. It was simple. It was corny. It reminded me of some of the segments they did with Mr. Perfect, but just in reverse of them being uh, so bad at basketball. It was pretty good. I liked how they kind of broke it up, too. They did one chunk of it where they were really bad, and they came back from commercial and showed that uh, Ivar, who doesn't know how to play, actually does know how to ball and can dunk the ball. I thought it was. I thought this was fine, and this added some humor to the Viking Raiders, who are, seem to be very, very serious about their tag teams, and they speak like this. They speak like rough wrestlers, right? Uh, and they had a. Uh, they kind of poke fun at themselves. I, I'm not going to say it's the funniest thing I've ever seen on WWE television, but it added levity to their storyline. And I, I, I didn't. I didn't hate it. I liked it. I thought it was neat. It didn't lose me, and it was way funnier than what they were doing with earlier in the night with Archers. Next week, they're going to, uh, it'll be Advantage Vikings as they go axe tossing. Yeah. I immediately, I, why didn't you read my mind? I immediately said, like, they're not going to go hunting, but they're going to do something with weapons. That's exactly what I said in my head, too. I was going to say hunting, and I went, they're not going to do that. I was that. in the middle of this segment. I went up for a second to go to go wash my hands. I was being nice. I just ate, so I was going to wash my hands after you wash your hands before you eat. And after you eat, right? So I, I just ate, so I was going to go wash my hands. And I, I was like, oh, next week they'll do x throw. <laughs> and immediately when you said that, that makes complete sense. Yeah. Um, we got uh, Shayna Baszler. She is one of the superstars that tapped into this storyline of Becky Lynch getting pregnant. And she had some brutal lines to say here. A brutal, brutal, just maybe uh, one of the underrated talking segments of the night. This was brutal. So, Thing. how stupid can you be to get knocked up when you're the champion and she's gonna be fat and barefoot with this baby and oh. all, all this like and she delivered it with a lot of like no hold back she she, she looked like she meant what she said Nat, natalia gets in her face and natty's not having it at all and she goes who are you to talk it's not like you're ever gonna have a kid i was just like oh my oh. god <laughs> Basler is going for it. Uh, I saw a lot of women online going like, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> like, no, like it was brilliant. I say, give me more. Y- yes, you loved it. And uh, and then then this line: the heart dynasty dies with you. What? That's a little rough considering everything the heart dynasty has to go through, but ah. Uh. Well, yeah, was it too I far? Did you think line. they went too far? You guys, I could have done without that line. Um, but everything else is spot on. I don't like the fact that between this segment and the moment of bliss segment, we seem to have already beaten into the ground that Becky Lynch is having a child. But you know, it was the popular news of the day. Yeah, the but, the why not? I mean, it's the most, it's going to be the we're it's the first thing we're talking about. It's the first thing that fans are talking about. It's the number one thing that fans are going to be talking about in wrestling all week long is that Becky Lynch is going to be out of wrestling at least at least a year and a half. You know, you're not going to see her in the ring for all if long. ever. Who's to say she ever comes back? True, there's a very good chance that she may not. And if she does come back, it'll be very limited. You know what I mean? What's to say she comes back and says she's going to get the Brock Lesnar treatment? You're not going to see me on the road. I'm a mother now. I'll go and do big matches here and there, but I'm not going to be on the road all the time. You know, uh, she could go into Ronda Rousey mode where we only see her a handful of times a year, right? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, she- I, she's earned it as it stands right now. She's the only woman, she's the only woman to ever win the main event of WrestleMania. She has done literally everything. She retired, I've tired. She walked away after 400 days undefeated in championship matches. She never lost the Raw belt after winning the Royal Rumble, winning the main event of Mania. She had a good run. Like, nobody can say. Yeah, if, if she is done, if she is indeed, if we never see her wrestle again, she's the first ballot Hall of Famer. You know, like, if she doesn't yeah. want to wrestle anymore, 
she's earned her spot. Now, does that does that is that a ballot that comes up in a few years or something like that? Who knows? I, I don't think next year, but we'll see. Um, so, I, I will say there's no way Becky Lynch has her final moment in front of nobody. No. She will wrestle again, even if it's one time. Yeah, I think so. You know, I will say that. I don't, I don't think she's done. I think she's too driven of a person to not want to compete or at least perform in some way that seems suitable for her life moving forward. Is that fair? That is fair. All right. So if she's not the champion, Sheena is certainly stepping up here. Asuka is the champion. Um, I think Asuka's deserved it. I think she's been one of the shining parts of WWE in this no fans time for the past two months. Her personality really pops with no crowd there. Not to say it didn't pop with a crowd there anyway. Asuka's uh, been the best thing. I've, I've, yeah. I'm full, uh, they, go no ahead. No matter what you say across the board, Asuka has been the most consistently entertaining person in this uh, quarantine coronavirus time period. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think so too, but Shayna Baszler gets in the ring with Natalia. Natalia is the journey woman of WWE. She's always a valid uh, opponent for anyone she's in the ring with. Uh, I didn't think that she would have, she get whomped on. She didn't get whomped on the whole match by, by Shayna, but it definitely felt like she got a wrestling match and then Shayna got the best of her, nearly broke her arm and then gave her a big knee to finish this match, which is interesting. Usually they have her kind of choke someone out or do the arm breaker move here. Big knee. To, she kind of escaped getting her arm broken and Shane is your winner. Shane ruthless is mean. It looks like we're getting Oscar versus Shane for the raw women's championship. Yeah. And can you like, who, I can't imagine a better wrestling match with the current WWE roster across the board. than Oscar and Shane Baszler never happened in NXT needs to happen now and they need to just go balls to the wall with it they'll have a lot have of they had a match yet I, I don't even know yet have they even I had won- a match they were the final two in the elimination chamber and uh, and uh Shayna kind of steamroller because that's just the route they were going mm-hmm. as you know if Shayna had to go but i don't think they've yet. had a one-on-one yet like i they, do not think they've had a one-on-one if they have correct this guys we you know there's a lot to, there's a lot to there's a lot to consume and we sometimes and a lot a lot on tonight's raw there's a lot of different things on tonight's raw like a lot of different stuff here uh and then we uh as if the women didn't take enough of the night here we had the return of the iconics women's tag team champions alexa bliss and nikki cross show up for a taste of uh twisted bliss if you will and the Iconics return, so quite the night for them. We have not seen them on TV in a long time. And they were out there. They had a pretty fair match where they called them out. Now, this is uh, an odd thing. They return. They get right into the ring with the, the women's tag team champions. They don't get a title shot, but they beat them in a non-title competition here. The Iconics, I don't think anyone ever thinks they're going to think the, the best in-ring bell-to-bell performers, but they are uh, a standout in WWE in terms of just personalities that people can latch on to. They're so reactive. They have such presence in what they do. Uh, they are really, really big personalities. Uh, I enjoyed seeing them back on TV. What did you think? I popped huge. Like, I have missed the Iconics. I feel like they just sort of disappeared. It felt good to see them on TV. I hope that the attention paid to the women's tag team division doubles in the coming months because we haven't seen much of any, but I really enjoyed this a lot and I'm glad that they're back. Do they get the tag belts next week? Of course they do. Do you think, you think it's a given? Yes. All right. Uh, this this fan is on uh, right now. I hope it's not super loud though. Uh, so uh, we move on to next week. We're going to also going to have three McIntyre, he was successful over Andrade. He got to mow down Selena Vega's squad once again. I know some people think this is sort of repetitive, but uh, if if Selena Vega's squad's purpose is to make Drew McIntyre look like a legit badass, I tweet this out tonight. They're doing it. They're making him look strong and in a good way, and I think he is a guy who delivers on looking strong and being a fighting champion and all that good stuff. What did you think of this segment? I'm going to go turn this fan off. Go ahead. What I thought of this segment... Uh- it was fine for what it was. You know, McIntyre shines over the uh, Zelina squad yet again. I don't like that they're already teasing some infighting between them. I'm not a fan of that. Uh, 
I, I mean, it's, there's something there, especially if a team's been stacking up that many losses recently on television. There's something to be said for that too. Well, I mean, but, they just got together, bro. Like, let them. Yeah, I know that. I know they just got together. But here's the thing: the the the, the pages turn so much quicker than they did 20 years ago. So many, so many people want stories to be told like it's 1996 again. It's been a month, bro. I know, but a month. How many, how many times have they been on TV in a month? Four. It's yeah, a, it's a lot of times. It's a lot of times they've been on TV, Robert. Everyone's. Well, why don't they tell stories like they did back when there was four papers? Because they I'm have like twenty papers to do. I'm saying you have some potential here. I don't think they should blow through it that quickly. Man, you just nitpick. Get your tweezers out. Robert, Robert's going to go in. Now, I mean, we are going at it tonight, Robert. I don't know. Uh, I, I wonder what your rating is going to be. I Kevin's really do. Got the, Kevin's got these weird takes, guys. I got weird takes? I'm what trying here. What am I? What are, what's so weird about my takes tonight? Well, first of all, that you think uh, a stable that's been around for a month is uh, long enough. That's, that's a weird take. What, long enough to be broken up? Y- yeah. It's been a I month. don't know if they're broken up yet. I, I wouldn't start fighting with – it's like if you just get into a relationship and you start fighting within a month, eh, that's that's just not good. That's how you know the sex is good, though. That's true. <laughs> uh, if, you're, if you're just joining us, give us your 1 to 10 rating on Monday Night Raw. We will get into all of that stuff here in just a second uh, about all of it here. Uh, of course, James Texian said he, give, he gives Raw 4.5. He did not like it. I gave it last week. The Randy Orton Edge stuff is great. All right, so he gives it a 4.5, but he liked Randy Orton and Edge. Uh, uh, Billy Two Ages uh, says, I see Elias and Corbin during the match with Drew. Yeah, that was an element there as well. Herman Texanin says he gives Raw a, a, a 7, uh, so he enjoyed it. Uh, and a lot of different stuff there. Uh, so <laughs> uh, Robert, uh, Robert, go 10. He on a roll. I, I get a 10. All right. Hey. Yeah, yeah, you're already ten. That's nice. I actually, I like surprised <laughs> you. I love this show. I'm gonna give it an eight. I thought this was a good show. You thought it was a good show. I thought this was a very good show. You thought it was a good show, but you were outraged that they they. Did I don't not properly like maintain the, the brains. I don't like some of where they're going, but like as it stands, it was a good mm-hmm. show. Like I can. It did for a three hour show. It didn't seem to lose my interest whatsoever. It didn't feel a, like it was light in the third hour. I think going into it with the vibe of something big is happening tonight because we got that late mm-hmm. in the game uh, announcement about Becky. You just it had a different vibe. It had like a high intensity vibe that we haven't seen from Raw in a long time, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, let's get into this show ending segment. We knew we were getting Edge and Orton in the ring together. Edge said, "I'm done with this Orton thing. I've reached closure with it." Randy Orton came out and said, you know what? You're the better man. You beat me. But you know what? I can't. You know, no, no, I'm going to get back in the ring. My music's going to play, but I'm not going to have that. You came into the Rumble with 29 other guys. You and I had a street fight. and You won a street fight. You were the better man, but you're not the better wrestler. All right, I'm the better wrestler. And so he wants a wrestling match. And uh, Edge was uh, non-conclusive in his response. And he says, I see doubt in your eyes. Charlie Caruso is in the ring. She introduced both of them. And she said, it will be the greatest wrestling match it will be the greatest wrestling match ever at backlash in five weeks they had a street fight that is very divisive amongst fans at wrestlemania a lot of people thought it was too long i enjoyed it i didn't i didn't think it was the best match at wrestlemania by any means but i thought it was far from as bad as people wanted to say it was i thought people who wanted to call it a bad match just wanted to call something on wrestlemania that was big and noteworthy bad so I don't mind pe- calling people out on the BS that they subplant over what's happening. Just I judge it as what it is. What? If you, if you guys would have just sat down like I did and, and eaten some food while watching that, you wouldn't have minded the length. Like it was, it was a fun match. Sit down and eat your dinner. It was an, it was an imperfect match. It was good. It wasn't great. You know, I, I'm fine with that. And it was a brutal match. And that's what they wanted to do. And they barely spent any time in the ring, but. Guess what? They're, everyone else is in the ring, you know. So all anyway. the more reason that, like, one thing I, I want to commend this segment for doing is the one that was on Raw tonight, correct? Yes, the one that was on Raw tonight. Well, it was a clear, it's a clear weird step backwards from hey, we're gonna do a last man standing match to we're gonna have a one on one wrestling match. Yes, most case scenarios that is a step backwards. However, 
These two men, because they are masters at what they do, manage to make a singles match sound enticing because Randy Orton made out the simple point of you haven't wrestled anybody. You haven't gotten in the ring and just had a match. And yeah. Edge, had, Edge legit had doubt in his eyes that he's you know, utilizing those acting techniques of facial expressions. I thought this was really good for a setup for a one-on-one -on -one match. You know, like what a I weird did, moment. But it was I good. agree with you. I didn't. It was one of those things where I, it was. It reminded me of WrestleMania, where it really built up my expectations, but I didn't feel like it was meaning. Like I was excited to see Orton and Edge get back in the ring together, in some way or another. But them to go from having this brutal, violent match where they just destroyed each other with chairs to now we're gonna have a wrestling match, it felt like a step down. You know, like uh, I liked it, but I definitely didn't love it. You know, uh, and and there's certain, there's five more weeks of TV. They can build this up and, and get me and do it. Uh, and these are two very compelling guys. You did bring up the the way that Edge sold it and that he said, like, you know, you may have a point. I haven't actually laced up the boots and just got yeah, in the like ring. Yeah. Um, and I thought that I, that is that is compelling, but it does feel like you guys just had this war with all these other elements. And now you're just going to have a match like there's something there. I just need. A little twist, you know, because they've twisted it enough. You got to keep twisting me now, uh, you know. So, so there was just that here. Um, oh, I love this. People going off on how our different takes of wrestling. Russell Haddock, a uh, big fan of the show. Thank you, Sir Ross. Robert, internet subjective opinion. Kevin, objective humble opinion. Both fun professionals. Thank you. We're fun professionals. Robert, can we put out a fun professionals T-shirt? I I think that that describes my life. <laughs> very well <laughs> we're fun professionals uh this was a this was a very noteworthy addition to raw like if you tune into raw and you want to see big things kind of happen and start off it always is even if you are a casual viewer fun to check in on an episode right after a big pay-per-view and we got one tonight this felt like a big show it felt very eventful it started off a bunch of new things uh, Ray Mysterio and Seth Rollins, I think, could be interesting if that's the direction they're going in. It looks like Ray Mysterio rumored to be leaving WWE. Doesn't look like he's going anywhere. I don't. I don't think. I don't, what? Who started that? So we can we can say that there was something that started over the weekend. It's it's people just been saying that. Oh, his contract yeah. coming up, so he's leaving. Uh, whatever. Uh, we don't know that for I sure. I will say that for for a man who was thrown off of a building. He wasn't thrown off a building. They said it on the show tonight. He was thrown off, and he landed six feet below on a secondary roof, Robert. See, I, I missed that. But you know what? Fair enough. Good good logic you, by them. You, you miss it when you just want to say, did they throw him off a roof when he's on TV? <laughs> Slow down and listen, pal. Let them yeah. tell the story. Don't tell it yourself. Good good uh, logic by them. Wish they would have shown him falling the six feet to the second roof, but that's okay. Well, that wouldn't stop you from bitching about that, too, though. You know no, what I, mean? I, I would have liked to have seen them both fall. Like, Alice Black got checked over the railings, too. Is that why they uh, is that why they were teamed tonight? Because they bonded over their mutual experience of falling to a second roof? <laughs> uh, people enjoy us just going at each other quite a bit here. Uh, yeah, this, this is, uh, someone telling me, uh, AEW fans started saying that Ray was going to sign with AEW. That, um, I, this is no uh, offense to any all Elite wrestling fan. Uh, if you're a diehard all Elite wrestling fan and you have that staunch, I'm only about them. Th uh, this is just me looking at the scope of everything. We look at wrestle zone. We make impressions with wrestling fans in the, in the range of 1 million to 1.5 million. And that is everything we do on our website, not just our podcast, everything we do on our website, everything we do on our Facebook, everything we do on Twitter, social media everywhere. Okay. Um, there is this sentiment amongst AEW fans and vice versa, WWE fans, um, where if they've chosen one side, they feel that anyone who may or may not leave the other one is going to go over. This is just like WCW, WWE back in the day. Like you're going to, people are going to say that over and over again. Just be prepared for it. Just, it's just, oh, if a guy looks like he's going to leave, he has to be going to AEW. Uh, that, that, that's, that is a very surface level uh, thing to look at. And it makes complete sense. Um, but I will say this looks like Grand Mysterio is not going anywhere for a while. And I think that that's good. To be clear, yeah, yeah. you know, Ray would have done phenomenal things for AEW. He did do the all-in show. Mm -hmm. And I, I think Ray is an asset to anywhere. 
And I'll say this. Uh, I spoke with him in October of last year. I had an interview with him. It was quite in depth. Uh, this was when he was still coming back from an injury. Uh, he's he's ending his career in WWE. That 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 is something he kind of said to me. It wasn't it wasn't something where I had to pry to get it out of him. He was pretty open about that. That I'm going to end my career in WWE and I want to have a match with my son Dominic. I want to be able to tag team with my son, and that's how I want to end my career. And ideally, that would be a, at a WrestleMania. Uh, that is not something he gets to have anywhere else. You don't get to have a WrestleMania anywhere outside of WWE. Uh, and if I'm Rey Mysterio and I'm in the twilight of my career, do I want to um, roll that proverbial dice when I can count on a couple of hands how many more big match pay-per-view payoffs I'm going to have? Uh, I would say stick with WWE. That's the platform for him to stay on. I would agree with that. I also think Ray is a guy who has so much experience and WWE is a depth driven company in terms of developing talent. I would love to see what Ray could do, you know, guiding the career of other cruiserweight wrestlers and, and being an agent. I think he could be an incredible agent to people in terms of setting up those matches and different stuff like that. If I'm Ray Mysterio, I stay with WWE. Um, but in all, yeah, there's a lot of possibilities there. He could do a lot of fun things. Yeah. But you know, I think wherever Ray ends up, and it likely will be WWE, he's done great things. He's had a great career. He deserves to just end on his terms in his way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Samoa Joe back in commentary. I heard a p- couple of people commenting on that. I enjoyed it. I thought he, I thought he had a strong presence on Money in the Bank and Raw. Yeah, he's the man. He's one of the best. Yeah, I, I think he adds quite a bit to the show. Uh, so a lot of different takes here on everything going on with Monday Night Raw. If you're watching on demand, don't be afraid to get in the comments below as well on YouTube, on the podcast side of things. Thank you so much for listening. We have uh, some really great interviews in the podcast feed that we just put up in the last week. Uh, we have Christian talking about the movie Cage Fighter along with John Moxley. Those are coming out on Fight.TV. Darby Allen from All Elite Wrestling speaks with us as well. You can go listen to these on demand. They are very evergreen. There's a lot of things they say in these that are profoundly touching on their careers in general. Uh, we're also dropping a special interview coming up very, very soon with a superstar from Impact Wrestling. A uh, noteworthy one that is on the rise there in Impact, and we'll have that coming up in the feed. So subscribe. Wrestle Zone radio you can listen to us on tune in can listen to us on iheart can listen to us on itunes all your popular podcast apps we are working on getting the show on spotify uh robert uh you are busy in the wrestling media world keep your plug light and do not offend me with this plug do not offend me i've had a night tonight with you i mean you guys know if you really want to follow me and be up to date with me. It's uh, Dude Felice on Twitter and Instagram. That is D-U-D-E-F-E-L-I-C-E. You know, I got a, a big boost in my Twitter uh, notifications when Sean Ross Sapp uh, just graciously... Just what did I say? ...graciously used my Twitter handle. And, boy, this guy is just like a magnet for people because, like, I just started getting notifications left and right because he mentioned me. But I saw that you had a you pleasant you. interaction with Sean. Yes, I, I, I did. I did he have an interaction. I did. did. So good. I, I like to see that. And it was not It was not hostile. We can see, guys, peace can exist when we allow it to. Oh, I, I have offered the peace offering, but I have not received it from the other side. Have I Robert? No, you didn't, but Sean's a busy man. Oh, he's busy. He's busy. He can, he can, he can brainwash you with threats and hostile attacks. You know, WrestleMania didn't happen in Tampa this year, but you know what else didn't happen in Tampa this year? You physically assaulting me from behind at the orders of your boss at your other company. Pick a side, Robert. Pick a side. Are you full of it with Fightful? Huh? Are you going to ride with your own at Wrestle Zone? All right. Are you full of it with Fightful? Or are you going to ride with your own at Wrestle Zone? Okay. I am riding with my own because I know all about me and I'm being <laughs> very well taken care of. So thank you. And good night. <laughs> thank you. 
<laughs> and a good night. Uh, yeah. So uh, overall, raw, you give it an eight. I'm not far behind you. I'm going to give it an eight as well. This was very eventful. I thought they set up a bunch of different things through backlash that looked pretty good. And we're getting Rollins versus Ray. I think that's a that's an interesting match. I think uh, I think Alistair Black versus Buddy. I thought they had a good series. I wouldn't mind seeing more of them. Overall, good direction for for going into backlash. I did not mind it. And I am not mad that King Corbin from SmackDown is going to take on Drew McIntyre next week on Raw. Uh, they did a good job of freshening things up here. So I give it an 8. You give it an 8. Pretty good addition in Monday Night Raw. Uh, do want to touch on this before we sign off for the night. Someone asked this. Uh, James Dolz saying, Alberto Del Rio, what the F? Uh, the, the dude is such an a-hole in general. Um, yes, I would, I'll answer that. Yeah. He's a real big a-hole, and uh, you should go check out that story at WrestleZone.com because I don't want to get into the disturbing no. acts no. of Alberto Del Rio on this show. We um, might have more for you tomorrow. We're not, we're not going to avoid it, but I don't think it's something that really we need to analyze or dig into. Um, the, sto- the story is this. Alberto Rodriguez, who has portrayed the character Alberto Del Rio uh, in professional wrestling on TV and has been a fighter, and MMA uh, is accused of some very violent and uh, despicable acts on a woman that he may or may not have been in a relationship with. Uh, we have the police report from the San Antonio, Texas Police Department. It is graphic in detail. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, I would say there, if you if you are someone who has unfortunately been a victim type of domestic situation or has been assaulted in the past, um, or has dealt with some trauma of that kind, this is not something I would suggest you read. And I'm not saying that to, oh, like, get anyone to go to our website and read no, anything. No, no, like, no. Like, I'm saying it because I think, the, the, yeah, these, are, these, these things are hard to read. Um, this is some Law and Order Special Victims Unit type stuff. Like, this is some pretty graphic, um, alarming things. Are real. And... You know, like Kevin said, if you have experiences with those kinds of situations, we do advise that you don't no. go there, or at least you go with caution, knowing yeah. that they are very graphic. Dorio belongs in jail. I have no problem saying that. Mm. Sue me, but you know, he belongs in jail. Those, if the allegations and everything that's in the police report is true, then then he's just a monster and doesn't belong among society. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to rush to the court of public opinion, which is, uh, you know, something that we're obviously in everyone gets their day in court, but it, it does. And even in the, and if we do, but if we do go with the court of public opinion, which is wrestling fans, right. Uh, and there are fans, they're the people that watch our show and, and take it in. Um, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to watch this guy perform again. No, I, no. if any company, let's say, let's say whatever did, you know, it's, not true or he gets off in any way if any company hires him you're despicable yeah i i I have no problem being fully opinionated on this one because this the the graphic nature of the reports is disgusting and it's just not good i'm sorry i don't want to end on such a sour Bad you know note. what? You're right. I don't want to end on a sour note either. So let's just go around the table. What's been your favorite thing from wrestling of the past week, I'd say? I thought Money in the Bank was a really, really fun show. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I didn't think it was the best pay-per-view I've seen from WWE, but in terms of a follow-up after WrestleMania, it's always kind of hard. I thought WrestleMania this year got good good marks from everyone. I mean, overall, it was a really, really strong show. There wasn't like one particular match at WrestleMania that was the best, but there were some highlights and some really strong things that WWE on a high expected stage delivered on. And Money in the Bank is one of those things, especially in the last 10 years or so, that casual fans and hardcore fans alike look forward to. But how do you do that match with no fans it's the challenge you're seeing over and over again um the presence of putting this in and making like a wacky race um very comedy driven main event which is odd to say that you have anything so comedic in the main event uh wb tried something i didn't love all of it but i loved most of it and when i looked at all the pieces i was like you know this is a pretty damn good show i had a lot of fun with this and i liked money in the bank i gave it a 7.8 out of 10 uh it was a for a pay-per-view that 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 was strong it ended early you know, that, that, that was another thing. I was like, I, you didn't even notice that. I was like, oh, wait, it's 8.30? It's not even 9 o'clock my time for the show. I, that is 
getting my vote for the best thing that's ever that's happened all week. That was so good to have been done with a recording and several articles by the time a pay-per-view would normally be going off the air. I want more short pay-per-views from WWE, and I hope we get them. I don't think every pay-per-view needs to be this short. Like, a WrestleMania needs to be, like, a long... Obviously, pay-per-view. but, like, the B-level shows, they can start experimenting with short run times. Or, like, three hours is fine. Just do a three-hour show. Nothing wrong. If you have a kickoff, you know, that's still, that's still like, a, a long show. Um, so, uh, really, really good here. Uh, and people asking about Yummy in the Bank. We'll have the Yummy in the Bank match uh, <laughs> uploaded soon. We had to do some tech issues, and there was a problem with that. Thank you guys for being patient with that, by the way, by the way, too. So we're, we're taking care of it. Uh, we were supposed to stream, and it's just a lot to do. I'm not in the studio. I don't have, like, a full computer studio set up. So we, we went through a lot of different hoops just to even try to do it. Uh, we still want to fulfill those things to you guys, and I appreciate your patience with that as well. Uh, but Money in the Bank, that was my favorite thing of the week. I thought it was really fun. I thought also another thing is people complain, oh, it's too funny. But I mean, like, look who won. People, a lot of fans wanted Oscar to win that match. A lot of fans were not upset that Otis won that match, but think it's goofy that they went with a goofy guy to win the title. Um, what do you do with uh, Asuka? She's she's just the champion. You don't have to ask who she's going to challenge. She is the champion. So that's done. What do you do with uh, Otis having that briefcase, Robert? I have no clue, and I'm just going to let it ride Mm -hmm. because there is no precedent here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jay Flisciano asking, does he cash in for the tag teams here? They they did do a teaser for this week's SmackDown, uh, wondering what Otis was going to do and if he would face the Universal Champion. But we noted on WrestleZone, and Otis said it in promotional interviews and different things, that he wants to cash in if he wins before the Money in the Bank aired, that he would want to cash in uh, for the tag team shot. I heard some fans put out the idea of what if he gives the briefcase to Mandy, his peach, you know, what if, what if he, he goes and says, you know what, I'm going to give you this briefcase and cash it in for a, a, a title opportunity. I thought that was a really cool idea, but mind you, that's just fans throwing stuff out there. That's, be cool. that's so much better than the tag team idea. I, I really, I would be nervous about the precedent of saying you can just cash it in for whatever, because I like the weight and the stakes that yes. come with it's weight only- and stakes. Yeah, because instead of weight and stakes, because they say weight and stakes, because they're all about. I, I, eating I, I didn't do that on weight. purpose, but you know what? It works. <laughs> we will be back tomorrow afternoon. All right, so that's the rhythm here of the Wrestles on Daily streaming schedule after Raw Tuesday after late afternoon after uh, NXT and AEW Wednesday nights. And then Thursdays, we kind of do a wrap-up of the week of wrestling late afternoon on Thursday. Uh, you can listen to the shows anytime you want on the WrestleZone podcast feed. Watch them anytime you want on Facebook and YouTube as well. Thank you so much for supporting the show. We are trying to grow here. We go with the rhythm of the things here, but thank you guys. A lot of faithful fans here in the show all the time. I love seeing those familiar faces. The Neshes, the Hermans, the Sean Smiths, the James Espantos, the Scott Georges. We love you guys. I want to see more new familiar faces here. Jay Feliciano and the and the, the all the them hard working ring crew boys. Appreciate everyone texting into the show and sticking with us here. You can listen to me on air on 101 WKQX weekends on air. Uh, we're getting busy to do a great fundraiser coming up on the 21st and 22nd of May on air. You can stream it anywhere in the world, 101 WKQX.com, where we will raise money for 34 independent music venues throughout the greater Chicagoland area. Venues that have launched the careers of bands like Smashing Pumpkins, Nirvana, uh, some of the best bands in alternative music, some of the best bands in music in general, relied on these venues to get ahead in in their career, and we want to support them. And that'll be coming up here. Uh, And that'll be the hashtag Save Our Stages fundraiser, which will be going on on air at 101WKQX.com the 21st and the 22nd of this month. Definitely get behind that cause and find out more at 101WKQX.com. For everything wrestling, go to WrestleZone.com. And for everything you're supposed to do when you watch wrestling, what do you do, Robert? You just enjoy wrestling.